Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will explore AWS CloudFormation. AWS CloudFormation lets us model, provision, and manage AWS and third-party resources by treating infrastructure as code. We will create a Redshift cluster, VPC with all the security components that we saw in the previous session through a CloudFormation template. So let's go ahead and launch the CloudFormation service. I have few stacks already in place. We will go ahead and create a new stack with new resources. We will select the Create Template in Designer option and launch the template designer. This launches the UI of the AWS CloudFormation. I have a YAML template that I will supply here. So I will select the YAML option and click the template tab. Let's go ahead and paste in the template here. The complete template code is available on GitHub. Link is in the description below. We can go ahead and refresh the UI. This will update the UI with the resources defined in the template. Let's review it briefly before creating the resources. We start with a public subnet. This makes the Redshift database available publicly so we can connect to it via a local SQL client. Since we cannot put the Redshift cluster directly inside a subnet, we create a cluster subnet group, and this subnet group is associated with the Redshift cluster. Then the cluster itself is associated with a security group that controls the access to the cluster and the database. Following this, we have a public route inside the route table, which directs the network traffic inside the subnet. We have an IAM role that has permissions attached to it. And lastly, we have the internet gateway that allows the resources in the public subnet to connect to internet. These are all the resources we are going to create with this CloudFormation template. Once created, we will connect to the Redshift database with the Redshift query editor and through a local SQL client. All of this is defined in the YAML template under resources. First, we have defined the security group, followed by the ingress rule to allow traffic from my IP to Redshift port. Previously, we have done this through the UI in the VPC security group. Then we have a public and private subnet. This is followed by the route table and the public gateway to route the traffic in the subnet. Following this, we have the spectrum role with permission to Redshift, then the Redshift cluster itself. Finally, it is the cluster subnet that is associated with the public subnet. To create the resources listed in this template, we can click on Create Stack button here. This will redirect us to another page where we can specify the template prerequisite. Our template is ready, and this is the S3 location where the template is saved. We will leave this as default and click on Next. Here we can provide a name for this stack. You can give it a name that will help you identify this stack. And we have the EC2 helper instance, and it does state that do not change this. So we will leave it as default and click next to proceed. On this page, we provide a tag as a key value pair. And on failure, we roll back the stack. We will leave the rest of the options as default and click on next to continue. Okay, we are done with the configuration of the stack. Here we can review the stack configurations and if everything looks good, then we can click the acknowledgement box and click create stack. Our stack is being created. We can click on the refresh button and we see the resources are being created for VPC, gateway and spectrum role. If we were to refresh it again, we see that some of the components are complete and new resources are in progress. This process can take a while to complete depending on the amount of resources on your stack. Once this stack is complete, it will have the create complete status. So I'll come back once this is complete. Okay, the stack creation is complete. We have a complete status next to the stack. So let's go ahead and launch the Redshift service to view the stack component and test it. The new cluster is at the top, so I'll go ahead and click on it. 
Under the properties, we can see the database name, port, and username. Let's go ahead and connect to this database. For this, we can launch the query editor. Let's connect to the database. But first, we need to select the correct cluster, provide the database name, and the database user. Let's click on connect. This is our database and the schema. At the moment, this is empty. Let's head back to cluster properties to get the database detail. We will connect to this database from a local SQL client. Under properties, make sure the publicly accessible option is enabled. And here are the rest of the details. We will need one more component, the endpoint for this database. Let's bring up dBeaver, that's the client. Let's go ahead and create a new connection. We will select the Redshift and click Next. In the host slash instance, paste the endpoint URL. We will need to remove port and database name from it. Our database name is AdventureWorks and username is ETL admin. And I'll go ahead and copy paste the password specified in the template. Let's go ahead and test this connection. And here we go. We are successfully connected to the Redshift. We can expand the database and see the objects in the database. Let's go ahead and create a table. We will open a new query window and paste in a script to create a table. This is the same table we have created in the previous session. Let's execute the query to create this table. And let's go ahead and refresh the table node in the database and we have a table in our database. We can confirm it in the Redshift query editor. So let's launch the query editor and our table shows up in the query editor. We can expand it to confirm the columns and the data type. If we want to, we can go ahead and query this table. However, we do not have any data yet. So let's go ahead and insert some data in it. I will move back to dBeaver and paste in a script to insert some data. We will utilize the copy command to import data. We will provide the table name and we will list out the columns. And in the from, we are referencing an S3 object. If you have been following along, then we loaded this data from an on-premise database to S3. And this is the location of the file on S3. This is the role we are going to use to import data. Then we specify the delimiter and tell the copy command to ignore the first row as our file has headers. Let's go ahead and execute this command. And we get an error. This tells us that this role is not associated with this cluster. We can switch back to AWS and fix this issue. We will navigate to the cluster properties, scroll down to locate the associated IAM roles, and this is the associated role with this cluster. Let's click on it to view its permissions. At the moment, it only has Redshift access. Since we are reading objects from S3, we will need to provide it the S3 permissions. So let's attach an existing policy. So we'll need to search for S3 and attach S3 full access. Now this has S3 and Redshift access. Let's copy the ARN for this role and switch back to dBeaver. We are going to replace the IAM role here and uh, we can paste in the role ARN. Let's go ahead and give it a try again. This time around, the query is running and we get a success message. We have loaded the four records into the table. Let's go ahead and execute a query against this table to confirm if the data loaded successfully. Our query returns four rows back, so the data is loaded successfully. We can also query it in the Redshift query editor to confirm it. The query returns data, so we have successfully loaded S3 data using copy command the copy command is the quickest way to move S3 data into the Redshift database. We will explore more options as we progress through the AWS ecosystem. This is how we create a Redshift cluster using the CloudFormation template. We package all the required resources and create them in one shot. I hope you enjoyed this session. This is all for now. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.